All right. Are you, are you ready? We're going to do some fighting here. So I guess you have to pick and choose your best fighter here. Because we, got a, we are welcome to this session. It's the telemetry showdown. It's Flynn Bit versus the Open Temperature Collector. So before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Henrik Rexed. I'm a cloud native advocate at Dynatrace. So I've been joining Dynatrace since three years. About. And when I joined Dynatrace, I had the chance to join this fantastic community, so the Observity community. And I'm pretty much an Observity geek, so that's why I started a YouTube channel called Is It Observable? So it's out there, check it out. And uh, yeah, otherwise, most of my career I spent it doing performance engineering, so testing, breaking, tuning, having fun. And that's why I'm uh, still, performance is in my heart, so that's why I still produce content for performance engineer on the YouTube channel called Bytes. All right, enough of speaking of myself. Before we start, I have a small disclaimer. So first of all, to prepare this talk, no birds or no telescope has been harmed. I was really gentle with all, both of them, so keep that in mind. Second thing, this talk is not aimed to blame any project at all. The idea of this talk uh, is to give you some, uh, some tips, uh, some numbers, so that it will be easier for you to pick and choose which agents you have to select. And most of all, I love the Flint community, I love the Open Temperature community, so here it's more about helping all the community to provide better agents, better support, and so on. All right, so let's select the fighter. So we have two fighters. On the left side corner, we have Ryu, if you remember that game. So he comes from the Fluent Dojo, uh, and uh, Flint D was there out there, Flint Bit was released. Uh, mainly very uh, popular in the logging space. So very, it, it has proven itself. And recently with FreeNBit 2.0, and 2.x in fact, it sort of started to support metrics and traces. So very interesting. And on the right side of the ring, we have Ken, which is the, coming from the Open Telemetry Dojo. Uh, so very, the, of course, it's the open standard. You all know about it. And uh, they provide a component called the collector. I'm pretty sure that all of you are aware of the collector. Uh, first, was supporting to ingest traces, and then once metrics was supported, is supporting metrics, and now recently it's supported logs. So the big question is, okay, so both is supporting metrics based in logs, which agent should I choose? So this talk is here to help you for that. So we're gonna have several rounds in that fight, and we're gonna compare a few things. So first, we're gonna compare the design experience the plugins that are available, and then we're going to jump into details on the log pipelines, what are the features that we have from both A sides, uh, metrics, uh, and then traces. And last, I did a lot of tests, so I'm going to share a few numbers. Um, and yeah, the idea is to figure out who is lighter in terms of resource consumptions, and at the end we will share uh, at least the conclusion uh, for you. And again, Flintbit 3.0 has released today, and now you have more features. So this is a benchmark with Fluentbit 2.x. So keep that in mind. Probably with the 3.0, three, the, three the numbers will be different, and the conclusion will be different. All right, so round one, design. So uh, both agents are, um, are, has a configuration file. So once you load the agent, you have to load this configuration file. It's the pipeline. And for each pipeline, it's going to be the same thing. You will have to define what we're going to receive, so input in the frame bit wording, and receivers in the collector. Then we're going to process. So process means modifying the data, enriching the data, dropping data, whatever you want. So in the collector, it's named processors. And in the frame bit world, it's named parsers and filter. And then last, once we have done our job, we want to send it to Observe backend. So we're going to use a, an exporter in collector and output in the Flimbit world. Um, one important aspect is that since Flimbit 2.0, um, they have introduced this, this notion of processor, which is also being part of three, uh, release 3, where when you receive something, you can have in the same thread when you're receiving, starting to filter. So you can already drop, rename, very efficient, uh, so multi-thread 
approach. Uh, and you can do the same thing on the output. So just before sending out your data, you can do some last minute change uh, re regarding the, uh, the back end that you are targeting. Now, when it comes to the pipeline itself, uh, the collector, of course, supports all the signals. So you can do whatever you want in the traces, in the metrics, in the logs. And uh, we should expect the same once uh, continuous profiling is out there to do also some transformations. In the Fluimbit side, in Fluimbit 2.0 at least, 2.x, um, in the log you can basically receive, parse, filter, and then export. But when it comes to the metrics and the traces, it's more like a proxy or a gateway, where you receive something, you're not able to modify anything, you just send it out. So that, keep that in mind, because you will see that a lot of things, the constraints that we have through it is mainly related to this point. Now, in the, the, the Flimbit design, the way you design pipeline in Flimbit is quite convenient. I mean, that's my opinion. Uh, because when you receive something, you can tag. So, oh, this is Kubernetes. So I'm going to tag it Kubernetes. And then later on, when you design your pipeline flow, you will apply plugins, filter or parser, and you say, oh, this plugin will only be applied for, the, ta for the, the tags that are Kubernetes, dot star, or whatever. So at the end, you, it's a very lightweight pipeline that you have, and just by playing with those tags, you can do very complicated pipelines, a lot of complicated transformations, so it's very convenient. And at the end, if you look at the, pipe, the plugin, the pipeline file, it's a very light, I mean, compared to the collector, it's going to be very shorter in terms of, of uh, steps. On the collector side, you don't have this notion of tags. But they have introduced the notion of connectors. You're probably aware of that. And specifically, the routing connector. So routing connector acts like a switch. So say, oh, based on the resource attributes that are here, we're going to trigger that pipeline. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to trigger this pipeline. So at the end, you can do the similar complex pipelines in the collector. But it's just that you will have more pipelines to design. So at the end, the, the, the file, the pipeline file, the structure will be much more uh, bigger than the one from Flimbit. The Flimbit pipeline used to look like this. So you have a section, so input. Then you name which plugin. So the name uh, of the plugin will be the name tail will be a plugin. Then filter, you see name Kubernetes, so that's a plugin. And then you configure them. And then, like, remember, there's a sequence. You start with parsing and then filtering. And then, basically, it's a sequential approach. So when you design your pipeline, you're already designed to the flow of the pipeline. Now, with the Flimbit 2.0, 2.x, in fact, and 3, now you have a YAML structure file, which is much nicer from my perspective, where you have inputs, the input section, the, parse, the filter section, the parsing sections, and the output sections. And you can see here, there's a process uh, here or whatever. The, you have a processor sta uh, step where you can attach, OK, for this log, I want to do some transformations. So basically, on the same thread, when you receive, boom, you're already applying the, the modification. In the collector, the approach is a bit different. The collector in, in your pipeline, you first basically list the, pipe, the plugins. Oh, I have some input plugin. Oh, no, sorry, receivers. <laughs> and so you define all the, the list of all the receivers I want to use. You configure them. You do the same thing from the processor. You list all the processor that you want to use. Same thing from the, uh, the, the exporters. And at the end, at the pipeline sections, this is where you define the actual flow. So I'm going to start with this processor, then this, then a Kubernetes attribute processor, and then batch processor, and so on. So it's in the pipeline section. So at the end, in terms of design, we have this similar experience. It's just that Flintbit has an approach that the collector doesn't have. But at the end, it's pretty much equal on that round. Now round two, logging. So logging, what do you expect from an agent when you are collecting logs? First, there are uh, standard protocols that needs to be supported, so UDP, TCP, Fluent. Fluent is the protocol from the Fluent community. Uh, open telemetry, of course, syslog, uh, Kafka, because probably you will go through a Kafka uh, a queue, uh, and of course, read from a log file. And the good news is both agents has the same plugins. I mean, Collector has obviously more plugins, that's true, but for the, for the main use cases that we need, those plugins will cover most of our needs. So pretty much equal in terms of uh, plugin coverage. In terms of processing on the logs, what we want to do is, of course, to enrich the logs, to uh, add maybe Kubernetes metadata if you're running in a Kubernetes environment, to parse the logs, of course, uh, and also to do some batching when before sending it. So both has the same plugins, not named the same way, of course. 
Um, I would say from the parsing perspective, Flimbits has lots of features. So the regapps, the JSON, the, the fact that you can build your, your own EULA scripts to parse. Uh, there's a WASM plugin as well. So I think in, in the parsing uh, aspect, uh, even if co the, open co uh, the collector has the OTTL, so Open Telemetry Transform Language, it's kind of more easier to design your processing, uh, your parsing uh, uh, pipelines, for sure. So I would say for parsing the logs, Flimbit has a, a slightly advantage, but both has the same features. Now let's cover the metrics. The metrics, of course, what we want to do is to collect metrics with the most common protocol, so collect D, stats D, of course, Prometheus, so having the ability to collect from Prometheus endpoints, and also collect metrics from a host perspective. So uh, both has the plugins, that's perfect. I would say that the only disadvantage with Flimbit is that there's no support for scrap config. So you can collect the data, and there's no way of doing relabeling, no way of doing metric relabeling. So that, from my perspective, was a big disadvantage, specifically on the collector side. Oh, no, no the Flimbit side, sorry. And then on in terms of parsing, of course, we expect the same thing. I want to enrich the metrics. I want to drop the metrics. I add some metadata. On the collector, you have some plenty of options. All the options that you need. You want to reduce cardinality, you can do this. Uh, you want to rename, uh, you want to transform, you can do that. But in Flimbit, again, like I said, no way of get modifying the data in Flimbit to Rex. Uh, uh, this morning, it's been announced with a three uh, with the version three, we can we should be able to do that, which is fantastic. And one, which is uh, with Flimbit Dodex, the big disadvantage is no way of reducing cardinality, and this is going to be quite uh, painful, especially if you want to reduce the, the 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 cost of your metrics. Having that option is really really important, and all the option is to convert. If I'm collecting Prometheus and I want to convert to Delta, depending on the storage. I have no way to convert that in Flimbit as of now. So on the metric side, I would say that collector is clearly an event, uh, the, the winner on that side. Now on the traces, on traces, of course, you know, want to collect traces, so open telemetry, open census, Zipkin, probably also from Kafka. Um, so both has uh, the only, uh, on the traces size, uh, open telemetry, uh, the Flimbit support on, only open telemetry. But one big imp important note, it's only support open telemetry on OTL PHTP protocol. So if you have a gRPC utilized in your environment, then you have to figure out how to translate the protocol. And of course, uh, the collector doesn't have that, that pain because it's been designed to, for traces initially. When it comes to traces, what do you want to do? Of course, you want to enrich the traces, adding metadata, drop traces, and do some, uh, some, some sampling decisions. And as, as expected, the collector has everything, and Flimbit, like I said, is just a gateway, like a proxy, so the tracer will come in and go out, go, go, go out of, uh, of Flimbit. Now, so traces at the end, the collector is clearly the winner. Now, round five, performance. So I did some various tests, and as we saw here, we have obviously different features supporting on each agent. So I want to do a, just a pipeline with logs, a pipeline with logs and traces, and then a pipeline with log traces and metrics. And I want to compare it with Flimbit, and then do the same thing with the collector. And then with the collector, you can do processing a different way. You can do it at the, at the source with a file log receiver, or you can do it afterward on the processor. So doing with a transform processor, for example. So there's two ways of doing it. So I thought, oh, maybe I can test both ways and figure out which is the best solution for us. So in terms of pipeline, uh, because Flamebit obviously doesn't have the support for metrics and traces, I decided to do most of the complex tasks on the logging side uh, on the log pipeline. And then on the metric side and the traces, it's going to be basically receiving, maybe adding a few attributes, and that's it. Same thing for the metrics, receiving the metrics. I'm not able to do it for a bit, so I'm, do, I'm just sending add back to the backend. Uh, I also enable on both sides, of course, the, observer, the telemetry data, so to observe how those agents behave, so that will give you some insights. Um, for the tests, for, first of all, in the QR code, there is a repo with all the tests that I've did, so if you want to do it on your own environment, please feel free to do that. So how do I, do I achieve those tests? So I picked two demo applications, the hipster shop, the open temperature demo, 
And then I deployed several exporters in Prometheus. So Kepler is one of them. Then I uh, deployed the CubeSat metrics, node exporter. I have Istio, so all the Envoy is producing metrics as well. And, and then, yeah, let's do it. So like I said before, Freenbit is not supporting Hotel gRPC. So to be able to have a s comparison, I have injected in this environment a sidecar collector uh, in, uh, in the open telemetry, open telemetry demo to be able to switch protocol and send it to Flinbit. So that's the major difference between both environments. In the collector, you don't have that sidecar collector running into uh, the different parts. Now, let's look at the test. So I did ramp up tests, and then I did some soak tests. How do I do the ramp up? I run 50 users. I add 50 users to each application every 30 minutes. So at the end of the test, we have 200 users on hipster shops. 200 users on the hotel demo. And by applying load, of course, the app will produce more logs and will produce more traces. So that's how I'm, I'm, I'm measuring. So you can see on the, on the top, uh, up for you, it's gonna be on the top left. Uh, it's the number of logs received uh, on, on during the tests. So when you look at those numbers, so the, the blue graph is for in bit and the black one is the collector. So in terms of CPU utilizations, we are a bit better on the collector side, but it's not a big revolution. We have the same type of patterns in terms of utilizations, but, and then when, if you look at the memory usage, of course, if Flamebit is 15 megs, and the collector is about 95 megs. So in terms of resource, we have a clear uh, uh, advantage with, with the collector, uh, with the Flamebit, sorry. Now we've introduced the traces, you can see on the top we have uh, the number of spans coming in that is aligned with the load. Uh, in terms of CPU utilization, we have a bit the same behavior than before, not a big change. And then in terms of resource, in terms of memory, um, we, the difference is lower, but still the collector is consuming a bit more memory. Now, what's going to be interesting is the next slide. So two hour tests, now I'm introducing metrics. So you can see that uh, we have uh, about uh, uh, 500k metrics coming in, uh, in, in during the tests. And the collector, you can see that the behavior of the CPU has, is increasing before the previous tests. So we are a bit higher than the, uh, the frame bit compared to the other tests. And if you look at the memory usage, in the two hour tests, the collector jumped to 1.1 1. 1 gigs to 1.5 gigs, around that. So okay, now let's do a soak test to see if there is an issue with the memory. So now I do the, so the, the, a test, constant load, 50 users during 24 hours on both applications. And then if you look at the CPU utilizations, you can see that after a few couple of hours, we reached two cores of consumptions on the collector. And in terms of memory, I jump into about 9.5 gigs. It crash, restarts, and I say, hmm, that sounds like a memory leak. So I opened recently an issue about that. So let's hope it's going to be resolved. And then I say, okay, so how can I, what is, what is causing this? Is it metrics, traces, logs? All right, so let's look at, so I did the test with a soak test with only logs. And then I did a soak test with only traces and logs. And I can see the collector here, the resource usage is super stable. So it's from the moment I introduced the Prometheus receiver, then the numbers that you saw before start to, the, the memories start to jump into the roof, and same thing for the USB utilizations. So how can I delegate the metric collections? I said, okay, I, I want to go further. How can I do that? Well, for those who followed the Open Telemetry project, this has been an amazing feature. To be honest, I love this feature. It's called the target allocator. So it's only available with the Open Telemetry operator. And what it does is when you deploy the, the, the collector, so you have a CRD, you deploy a stat, stateful set, you can enable this target allocator. What it's gonna do is gonna take the scrap config that you've defined in your, in your pipeline, it will push it to the target allocator, so the discovery of the metrics will be done by the target allocator. And then once he has discovered the metrics, say, okay, so we have a, here we have a three replica, okay, so I'm gonna split the jobs. And then each jo collector at the end says, okay, target allocator, give me my jobs. And then the collector doesn't have to discover those metrics, he's just gonna scrap it. So I said, okay, maybe he's gonna resolve our problem. So for this, I, did, I had two collectors, one for the logs on daemon set, and one just for the metrics as a stateful set with the target allocator. So let's look at the results of this uh, same thing, 24 hours tests. 
And you can see that uh, the CPU utilization is about 200 millicore, sim similar to what we had before. And in terms of memory, we jump into max to 800 megs. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> and then the target allocator is about a couple of mini cores and a couple of memory. At the end, it's cheaper to run the allocator than just letting the collector scrap your metric by yourself. So here, no memory leak, no problems, super stable. Then the last piece that I wanted to cover is the processing. Where should I do the processing? Of course, the industry says, always do it up front. But then I said, okay, let, let's try to do the, the look at the numbers. And if you do it on the file log receiver, compared to transform, what I saw is that the memory usage of transform is less important. That was surprised. And then in terms of the processing time, so that's the graph on the bottom, I measured the, the time to receive, the time to process, and the, time, the overall uh, time. The time is the same. So no change in terms of the processing time. So again, no conclusion about that side, so just say, uh, filtering upfront is the recommendation of the market, so please do that, so then you will have less processing tasks to do. As a conclusion, I would say, if you only have to deal with logs, Finbit is amazing. But if you have metrics, if you have traces, and obviously you're gonna have it, then the collector with the, the Prometheus receiver, the, 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 all the fact that you, have the, you can reduce the cardinality, you can convert, is obviously the best player. So that's what my, my Conclusion, in terms of resource utilization, I would say the Flimbit has an advantage as of now, but again, uh, it really depends on the use case. If you do only logs, pick Flimbit, that will be my recommendations. Uh, small teaser to Is It Observable, so that's the YouTube channel. Uh, I have plenty of episodes, and the details of this benchmark will be released on the channel in a few weeks, so check it out uh, if you want to have more details on this benchmark. All right, if you have any questions, I will be more than excited to answer all of your questions. No questions? I guess it was the, the, the brutal presentation after lunch. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Uh, it's a good point. Uh, so the question was, do I plan to extend this uh, study on other agents? Uh, I am, if it runs in Kubernetes, yes, for sure. I will try to do that. Um, and what I'm more excited is to do the same uh, benchmark with, uh, by utilizing the Flintbit 3, because, because now we have the actual processing available to figure out if if I start to do some pro heavy processing on the metrics and the traces, if I start to have the same behavior that we observed with the collector. But yeah, that's a good point. I think there are all other agents out there. It, it deserves also to include that in the benchmark. Any other questions? Hi, thanks for this. This is very useful. Um, I want to ask if you have any Hypothesis: Why the difference in memory consumption? Uh, is it just because auto call is not in C and Flintbit is in written in C? Or yeah, so clearly the, the the fact that you have an agent built in C is an advantage for sure. It's going to be super. And then the processing time I measured is few nanoseconds compared to milliseconds in the collector. So Flintbit, when you parse, it parses super fast. Um, so I think yeah, that's that's clearly an advantage uh, for sure. Do you think there's space for a, another collector written in Rust, maybe, or some other memory safe but performant language? And also, the, the, I think the, that could be a good point. And also, I think the, the di major difference is the uh, Prometheus receiver uh, is heavily impact, impacted, uh, the behavior of the collector. The way I'm collecting, the, I'm scrapping every 30 seconds, so I have loss, and I will have a couple of relabeling rules. And the problem is that you, you, in general, when you collect those metrics, it takes all the metrics comes to the collector. So let's say you have one million, and then you start relabeling. So this is heavy for the collector. And that's, uh, I, I guess, once uh, Flintbit introduced this, the scrap config approach, they should have the same, uh, same type of uh, constraints for sure. One, one point aspect is that I used the hotel contrib version, which has all the plugins. So in terms of memory, I was like at 95 megs. 
uh, when I started. If I have a distro with less plugins, I guess I could reduce slightly with few megs. But again, there's a still uh, a difference in terms of the memory usage. Oh, it's, it's over. <laughs> so thank you for your time. I uh, hope you enjoyed the sessions.